This is the city, Los Angeles, California. Over three million people call it home. And to serve them, the largest group of public buildings outside of Washington, D.C. The average year-round temperature is 65 degrees, a natural resource everyone enjoys. The railroads were among the first to realize this, proclaiming in the East only $5 from paradise. With your ticket came a land option. It was just 100 years ago. Along with the climate, a brass band greeted some of the early arrivals. The great migration still continues. My job gets bigger every day. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Monday, October 7th. It was fair in Los Angeles. We were working out of Public Affairs Division, Crime Prevention Section. The boss is Captain Shannon. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. It was 8.50 a.m. Lieutenant Bob Kearney handed us an assignment, enforce the department's new crime prevention program by organizing neighborhood action committees to stop the criminal before he strikes. <laughs> This keeps going up year after year, not only here, but all over the country. Yeah. Last year, aggravated assaults increased 8% nationally. Auto thefts went up 12%. Armed robbery, 13. Now, here in Los Angeles alone, there were over 60,000 burglaries, and this year there'll be more. Right now, an average of 164 take place every day. As you well know, that means the crime rate is increasing faster than the population. Now, both of you know all this. Just as you know that crime prevention is our only hope of curbing the increase in crime, the average citizen makes life far too easy for the criminal, especially the burglar. House doors left unlocked, cars not locked. Easily move merchandise placed too close to the door of a store. Money and jewelry left out in plain sight. Public's learning, but not fast enough. We're scheduled to talk to a community action society. And to an insurance adjusters association. Good, but we've got to take some direct action too. Now, we worked out the areas being hardest hit by the thieves right now. This district is one of the worst. It's a business area of about a dozen blocks bounded by Jarvis, Green Street, Blake, and Sutton. Small stores, restaurants, couple of barber shops, bars. Who's hitting them hardest? Everything from shoplifting to purse snatching. Now, the boys in burglary and robbery think that most of it might be the work of the same small gang. But without the cooperation of the people in the area, they haven't been able to do much. Now, your job is to get that cooperation. Yes, sir. Now, there's a druggist in the district. His name is Harold Wilson. He's been trying to get all the store owners to form a crime prevention organization. Any luck? No. However, he has managed to arrange a meeting with some of them for tonight, and he's going to need help convincing them they should cooperate. Now, here's the time and the place. We'll do our best. Joe, this is urgent. Yes, sir. If your best isn't good enough, do better. <laughs> At 6.20 p.m., Bill and I spent the afternoon outlining crime prevention methods to a group of homeowners. Then we drove over to the troubled neighborhood. The meeting didn't begin until 7, but we got there early. We wanted to look the area over. Pretty nice stars along here. Yeah. You'd think they'd do everything they could to protect their property. Yeah, but they don't, do they? Nice area for shopping. For stealing, too. No wonder they're being hit so often.
clothing store back there. He's got some nice stuff. Yeah. Eileen was saying I could use some new clothes. What do you think? Might be a good idea. I've only had this suit a year. My other one still looks good, doesn't it? Looks fine to me. Then what's the idea? What do you mean? Why do you say I need a new suit? 6.50 p.m. We went into the restaurant where the meeting was scheduled to take place. Harold Wilson, the man who was trying to form the Neighborhood Crime Prevention Organization, was there to meet us. It was good of you to come, Sergeant. I just hope you haven't wasted your time. Why is that? Well, I tried to get as many to come as I could, but I'm afraid only a few showed up. Well, we'll talk to those who did. They all agree in principle that we should help each other, but when it comes to doing something, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's called non-involvement. That's right, but it's our neighborhood, our stores. Why can't they see they are involved? Oh, I'll tell you why. It's because we've got our own problems to handle, and if we do that, it's more than enough. Sergeant Friday, Officer Gannon, this is Lisa Ruby. She was kind enough to let us use one of her banquet rooms for the meeting. Old Harry here was so worked up about the whole thing, I just couldn't turn him down. But you don't think much of the idea, is that it? Oh, sure I do. People like Harry need it. It makes them feel secure. Me, I've got everything under control. I hire good bouncers, and I spend a fortune on burglar alarms. I've got steel bars across all the windows and double locks on all the doors. No, you can take my word for it. This place is absolutely burglar-proof. You see, I'm one woman who believes in looking out for herself. Yes, ma'am. There are others who said the same thing. Is that right? When they called us to investigate their burglary. Seven p.m., the meeting began. We kept it very informal. Yes, we understand. Well, the increase in crime, particularly burglary, continues all over the country. But the ability of the police to do their job depends on the extent of your cooperation. Now, to put it another way, the problem today is not chiefly the burglars, but the citizens who refuse to become involved. Maybe there's a reason why they don't want to be involved. Maybe it's because they're afraid of what might happen. How do you mean, sir? Well, I don't feel like taking any chances. I run a delicatessen. A lot of my customers are these wild kids who hang around here now. They could do a lot of damage to my place if they had an axe to grind. You mean you'd let them do a little shoplifting if they want to do? Well, as a matter of fact, I suppose I would. It's cheap insurance. Don't be too sure of that, Mr. Gulka. Once they know they can get away with the small jobs, they'll start on the bigger stuff. Besides, you're not thinking of your neighbors. How's that? If they can get away with shoplifting in your place, they'll try it in every store in the neighborhood. And they try it now. Not in my place, they don't. Not in mine, either. I keep my eyes open. Just a little while ago, I caught some guy in sailor's pants handling some of the gold cufflinks I've got in my window. Brother, I threw him out on his ear. And you think that was enough, do you? I got rid of him, didn't I? No, sir. You probably sent him down the street to somebody else's store. Sergeant Friday, in a case like that, what should have been done? Pick up your phone, call the police. I called the police once. They took almost an hour to get here. Mr. Dalton, there are three million people in this city. There are 5,700 policemen. There are bound to be times when more calls come in than we can handle. But if yours is urgent, if you say clearly the crime is happening now, the suspicious character is here now, your call will be given priority and a policeman will arrive quickly. That sounds good, but what comes after? If we phone in, we'd be tied up with the police for hours. We might even get mixed up in a court trial. We haven't got that kind of time to spare, Sergeant. Well, look at it this way. If it's your store being robbed or your home being broken into, you'd want a neighbor to take an interest to sacrifice a little time. You've got to do the same thing. The old golden rule, eh? Well, when one of my neighbors starts watching out for me, I'll watch out for him and not before. Sergeant, when I was speaking to your lieutenant, he said there were a number of things we could do to cut down the crime rate. There are. Ask the police to conduct a security check. We'll be happy to inspect your doors and locks and other protective devices. Make sure you don't leave anything lying around a burglar might use to gain entry. Far too many people leave a ladder outside. Now, that's an open invitation to enter and steal. During business hours, make sure your employees are criminal conscious. Now, before we came here, we took a fast look around the neighborhood. We saw at least five mistakes that you people are making. The Boulevard restaurant, cash register on patio, left unattended. We couldn't tell if it was bolted down, but every day, somewhere, one that isn't is carried away. And if it was, it only takes a minute to open the cash drawer and grab and run. Pete's Delicatessen, empty milk bottle cases stacked on the sidewalk. Now, a burglar who wants to smash a store window needs something heavy to do it with. An empty milk bottle case works perfectly, and it's light enough to carry to any store in the neighborhood. Cochrane Stationery gutter pipe provides easy access to second-story window. The gutter pipe can't be moved, so the window should be barred. You invite trouble when you overlook even difficult means of entry, and this one is easy. 
The barbershop manicure is seen placing open purse on floor behind her. Remember this. There's always somebody watching. When that manicurist turns her back, a passerby could walk in and take that purse. It should be kept in a more secure place. Dalton's men's store. Expensive, easily concealed merchandise displayed in store window and no display case doors. Gold cufflinks. Easily carried, easily sold. Such things tempt a burglar and they shouldn't be displayed. They have to be. I'd never sell them if they weren't. Protect them, then. Install doors behind the display window and put steel grates over the outside of the windows to protect them at night from window smashes. And those milk cases you mentioned, they have to be left outside. The milk company picks them up every day. Well, then make other arrangements, Mr. Gulka. Keep them locked inside the store until the dairy truck arrives. Special doors, iron grates. This crime prevention business could cost us more than the crimes. We already pay for burglar alarms, and we pay taxes that run the police department. As far as I'm concerned, that's enough. Anyway, it seems to me all this is simply an old-fashioned, straight and simple case of passing the well-known buck. How do you figure, ma'am? Now, well, here's how I figure. Doesn't look to me like you people do your job. Yes, ma'am. If you did, there wouldn't be any increase in crime, would there? Do your job. We are, ma'am. That's why we're here. Seven forty p.m. Bill and I return to the office to fill out our reports and to sign out for the day. That Ruby woman at the restaurant sure hard to get to, isn't she? Yeah, same old story. Nobody needs us till they need us. Yeah. Say, you want to come by the house and have a bite to eat with Eileen and me? No thanks. I'll open a can of soup. Soup? Yeah, I'm not very hungry. Never keep your strength up on just soup. That's all you're gonna have, huh? Maybe I'll have some sliced tomatoes. Gonna have anything with them? What do you mean? Well, a few sliced Bermuda onions that sure go good with those tomatoes. Maybe. Wine vinegar and oil dressing? Yeah. Little toasted French bread with garlic butter? Yeah, I might do that. You got any Parmesan cheese? I usually keep some on hand. Great on the bread, you know. Toasted under the broiler. I know. I have it that way sometimes. How about the steak? What steak? Well, you keep some in your freezer compartment, don't you? Yeah, I got two or three fillets, I guess. Great. Have to have the broiler on for the bread. Might as well toss a couple of steaks on, too. Couple. Now, how about dessert? What do you got in mind? Well, I got some frozen chocolate cake. My favorite, with coffee. Sure. Sounds great to me. Huh? Fine, I'll put the paperwork to bed. You hop out to your place and get things started. Yeah. I'll call Eileen. You will. Tell her I'm having dinner with you. You are. I'm not like you, Joe. Is that right? Sure, you invite me to dinner. I accept. Tuesday, October 8th. Bill and I spent part of the morning talking crime prevention to a breakfast session of a service club. 10.45 a.m. We reported the outcome of the previous evening's meeting to Lieutenant Kearney. How'd you do? Well, we talked for over 40 minutes, but I'm not too sure we reached them. Seemed to have their minds made up before they came. The usual hard nose. The usual know-it-all that doesn't think he needs his neighbor's cooperation. A few. One of them named Charles Dalton operates a men's clothing store. That's right. Well, you might find him and the others in a different frame of mind today. Well, how's that? Somebody hit his store last night. 459 PC, window smash. Everything in the window was taken, including some expensive gold cufflinks. What about the burglar alarm? It was tripped. But by the time it was answered, relayed to a patrol car, and the car got there, three and a half minutes had passed. More than enough time to grab and run. These things have to be stopped before they happen. Burglary pick up any leads? No, but Dalton swears he knows who did it. Some long-haired character wearing sailor pants. Burglary know how the window was smashed? An empty milk bottle case. I guess this would be a good time to talk to Dalton again. Well, you'll find him and the rest waiting for you at Ruby's restaurant at noon. Harold Wilson phoned. This time they asked him to arrange the meeting. I don't know, Skipper. Always seems to be the same old story. See what you can do about changing it. 12.10 p.m. We arrived at Ruby's restaurant. Every neighborhood businessman who could get away was there. The others asked to attend a later meeting. Bill and I did our best to once again drive home the importance of the crime prevention program. It's not enough to order a would-be thief from your store. Call the police. We'll get the suspect's name and address. Now, if Mr. Dalton here had done that, there's a good chance we might have his suspect in custody by now. Never hesitate to call the police. Now, we can't be everywhere at once, so we've got to depend on your eyes and your ears. Report anything suspicious, anyone troublesome. Remember, when it comes to shoplifters, it's the hands that do the stealing. Instruct your staff to keep their eyes on their customers' hands. And that's not easy. Shoplifters use a number of gambits to hide their actions. 
Bulky clothes, umbrellas, newspapers, shopping bags, phony packages. They'll try to rattle your clerks by fast talking. They'll offer money for one item while pocketing another. Now, your employees should never accept money from more than one customer at a time. Why is that? The two customers could be working together. 1.10 p.m. For more than an hour, we detailed the various ways crime can be prevented, not only by removing the opportunities, but also by reacting to anything suspicious, at work as well as at home. Leave a front and rear door light on every night. It only costs pennies, but it might save thousands of dollars. Don't tell strangers your neighbors aren't at home. That might be just the information they're looking for. Now, if you live in an apartment, report anybody loitering, especially in the daytime. Apartment burglars work in the daytime. Don't try keeping money or jewelry hidden at home. Burglars all know where to look. Record the serial numbers of your valuable possessions. Now, if we can't identify a stolen article, we can't return it to you. When you go on vacation, cancel your newspapers. Ask the post office to hold your mail. Magazines piled on your doorstep tell a thief nobody's home. Now, you know your neighborhood. Keep an eye on it. A stranger taking a shortcut through the backyard next door might have broken into your neighbor's home. Report him. The strange car parked illegally might be loaded with stolen goods waiting to make a getaway. Report it. That loud fight next door might be the start of a violent crime. Report it. If you see a prowler at night, don't frighten him away by turning on a light. Report him. Remember, by helping us apprehend a criminal, you'll make sure that you're not his next victim. I guess you can sum it up in two words. What's that? Get involved. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Maybe now we'll get some results around here. Yes, sir, you will if you work together. No question, Sergeant. No question about that. Thank you. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Yesterday you said you'd conduct security checks if you were asked. That's right. I sure don't want any more burglaries. I would like you to check my store. Better late than never. Be glad to look over your place, too. You guys don't listen very good, do you? How's that, man? I told you. A thief doesn't stand a chance with me. Three ten p.m. Bill and I ran a security check of Dalton's clothing store as he requested. Mr. Dalton? That's a new lock. I just had it put on there three months ago. The lock's not much good, Mr. Dalton, if the wood is fastened to his rotting away. You really need a new door here, preferably a metal-covered one. You know, like a fireproof door, gives you a little more security. Oh, yes, I know that kind, metal-covered door. I checked your attic air vents up there, Mr. Dalton. You did anything wrong there? Well, they're pretty good sized, and they're not entry-proof. What do you think I ought to do about them? Check with your alarm people. They either should be modified or barred, preferably both. Well, I had no idea about these things. I really didn't, Sergeant. Well, don't feel bad. Most people don't. I mean, you run a place most of your life and you just don't think about getting burglarized until it happens to you. I can't tell you how grateful I am to you people for checking the place over. It's all right, Mr. Dalton. It's what we get paid for. Well, I've written everything down. Is that about it? No, sir, not quite. Oh, we never use that window anymore. That's why it's painted out. A coat of paint wouldn't discourage a thief, Mr. Dalton. Now, this window should have metal bars on it, outside or inside. Metal bars on painted windows, storeroom. Cashmere, aren't they? Top of the line. Pretty expensive? Two to three hundred dollars. That's each. That's right. Now, this clothing rack is on wheels, and it could be pulled over to that back door pretty easily. And do you notice how the clothing is hung on the rack? Nothing wrong with that, is there? Well, when you store hanging merchandise this way, you make it a lot easier for somebody to haul it off. Well, how do you mean, Sergeant? Well, you notice how you have all the hooks on the hangers facing the same way? Well, sure. That's to make it easy to fill the depleted stock out front. We can grab several at a time when we want them. That's what a burglar thinks, too. Now, why not reverse every other hook like this, see? Every other one, just reverse it. Now, if you get in the habit of racking your hangers like this, it makes it a great deal more difficult for someone in a hurry to grab an armload and make off with them. And burglars are usually in a hurry. Mr. Dalton, welcome to the club. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen, customer out front. Yes, sir, go right ahead. He's a nice dresser, isn't he, Mr. Dalton? Nice clothes, I mean. Eileen says you were right, Joe. About what? My clothes, she agrees, thinks I ought to get a new suit. I didn't say anything about your clothes. Well, that's what I mean. What are you talking about? You didn't agree with me. How's that? You said the clothes I have were still all right. Five ten p.m. We checked in with Lieutenant Kearney to report the progress made during the afternoon. You think they'll cooperate? All we can do is wait and see. There were still a few holdouts, like Lisa Ruby, who owns that restaurant. But will they keep their eyes open, pick up a phone when they see something suspicious? Well, Joe said it. We can hope. Uh, we'll find out in time. 
They've already made a lot of plans. They say they intend to start a campaign. They want every businessman in the area to join the organization. Each man will see to it that his employees practice crime prevention. Uh, what are your plans? Well, we'll check over their program, guide their discussions, demonstrate techniques. Fine. They want us to come to their next meeting. They seem to be enthusiastic. But it all sounds good. There's only one problem. What's that? Enthusiasm has a way of evaporating, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Let's hope we can keep the cork in the bottle. Monday, October 14th, 2.30 p.m. We had just spoken on the department's crime prevention program to a meeting of the Downtown Businessmen's Association. Our next appointment was at 4 p.m. I think we ought to take seven, don't you? Yeah, we could. You want to call in? I got an errand to do. Yeah. One out of 25, a possible 484 suspect there now. Pete's delicatessen, 4330 Green Street. <laughs> Sergeant Friday, two police officers were just here. Charlie Dalton described that guy he had trouble with? The one who wore the sailor's pants. Well, he just walked by. At least I think it was him. I saw him from my store. He had another man with him and a girl. They were just walking, but you said if we saw anything suspicious to call in. Yes, sir, you did right. Where'd they go? Uh, into Ruby's bar. That's where we sent the two policemen. Police officer lady, just settle down. All right, break it up, break it up. That's enough. This way. Well, Officer Gannon, nice of you to come. And Sergeant Friday, it's good to see you too. But as I was just telling those officers, my bartender could have stopped the fight. It wasn't much to begin with, more like a wrestling match. There was nothing to it. That's all they needed. What do you mean? While that phony fight was going on, this little lady was busy tapping your till. You mean while we were busy with the fight, that girl's in with him, is she? A setup. We call it a diversion. <sighs> Sergeant Friday, I, I don't know how to thank you. I guess my luck was running good. No, ma'am, it wasn't your good luck at all. It wasn't? It was your good neighbors. Look it. Sergeant Friday, I may be stubborn, but I'm not so pig-headed I won't admit when I was wrong. From now on, nothing happens in this neighborhood that I don't know about. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever check us out for seven? No, I thought I'd phone from here. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Seven? What does that mean? That's our radio call for lunch. You mean you boys haven't eaten yet? It's almost three o'clock. Yes, ma'am. Well, you make your telephone call, and as soon as Gannon gets back, you sit down and order anything you want on the house. Well, thanks just the same, but we're not allowed to accept gratuities. <laughs> it's just my way of saying thanks. It's not necessary. It's just part of our job. All right. We'll do it this way. Yes, ma'am. No law against the size of the helpings I give you. Didn't keep you waiting. No, no, I haven't even ordered. Had to pick up a little something at Dalton's. Only cost seven fifty. You bought a vest. Didn't need a suit after all. Just something to give my wardrobe a lift. This little item will pep up everything I own. It'll do that. You ought to get one, Joe. Do a lot for the way you look. Is that right? Didn't anyone ever tell you? No. What's that? Your clothes. They are a little on the dull side. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 25th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 183 of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspects pled guilty to 484 PC, till tapping. Because of prior convictions, they were all sentenced to serve terms of from one to five years in the state prison. 